us, we wanted to hire creators, people that literally could create something. Not someone to, to just execute an idea, but someone who would bring their own vision and that we could all collaborate together to find a new idea. If you look at Eduardo's sketches or Michael Joy's sketches, I mean, they're artwork and they're so inspiring to us. They really have embraced the idea of these are not the fairy tales you think you know. When we first started the show, we really wanted a runway feel to the to the outfits. We wanted it to be like an Alexander McQueen runway show. And Eduardo came in with fabric from the Evil Queen, and it was that feather cape she had in the pilot. And right away we knew he got it. I think as a costume designer, you have to be aware of what's around you all the time. You're constantly seeing things in magazines and you're constantly seeing things on social media and you're seeing things on television and in movies and uh, on people on the street too. Then you're looking for characters, you know, older people, people that maybe have different shapes are an inspiration. Uh, color is another thing and traveling is an amazing tool. Being around the world and being able to have been where I've been, that just changed my life and, and it changed the way I looked at clothes. And it's really a study of people. The inspirations were a lot of period, historical, Middle Ages research, watching movies and uh, a whole bunch of reference of architecture. Eduardo uh, sits down at his, at his desk with colored pencils and watercolors. We'll make a design and he'll pitch it to Adam and Eddie and myself and the director. We start with a drawing and it's just an idea and it'll change completely, a lot. Uh, a lot of times it's a fabric that uh, speaks to me. You have to be aware of the actor's body and that it suits their character. It's so important to be in tune with that. Michael will go off with his team uh, in the art department uh, and they'll come up with concepts. I read the scripts and I do like, I have these little notebooks and I do the sketches and I'd always had this book on primitive structures in Polynesia and thought, oh, well, this would be cool, you know? Because we're not limited. This season we built gigantic castles out in the middle of the desert that you could never build practically. It's fantastic, it just opens the scope up completely. Storybrook. We're trying to keep things rooted in, in reality. We want it to be more natural. There was the idea of, the, of Storybrook that the land that time forgot, which is something I love. So all the initial sets, we had some imagery of the forest to help to have the, in the back of your mind that, you know, fairy tale land is somewhere in these people's day-to-day -day lives, that there's something that reminds them of it all the time. Regina's office it was one of the first sets we built and it really struck a tone that we were gonna try and make this show as stylish as possible and uh, people responded so strongly to it. That became like a signature. don't know what fine clothes are until you start touching them and feeling them and you know what a Gucci blouse does or what a Prada blouse does. It's the fit and the cut and the way it just fits a body. It's amazing. And you have to learn when fashion meets costume design and when, and, and, and when actors are right for certain pieces. It's all the nature of the character, for example. Snow is always so noble and virtuous, so her colors are very, very soft. And then you marry it with certain designers, you know. For Snow White, definitely Prada is a big thing. We've used more Prada on her than on anybody else. Prince Charming is also very noble and heroic, so his things for the modern world are very, very simple but strong. This season we found a Bellstaff jacket, which is a very high-end jacket, and uh, he loved it so much we had it duplicated. We had it duplicated in leather. And then Evil Queen is Evil Queen in her modern world, very clean lines, very simple. Believe it or not, we've been very lucky with Zara for her, and we've used a lot of Burberry on her because the classic silhouette of a decent trench is really Burberry does better than anybody else. And Jennifer Morrison this season was a little bit of Helmut Lang with her J-brand jeans, but a little bit of Burberry here and there. Mr. Gold is 
is pure Dolce & Gabbana. His shirts are sometimes by Duchamp, which are very good. His ties are very classic. Bell has been the one that we were able to mix a lot of designers like Kenzo and Catherine Malandrino, Alexander McQueen, I believe, as well, and mix it with Free People and Armani, all kinds of things. And we've gotten immense response from the public about her clothes. design of the sets is the character. You know, Mary Margaret's apartment reflects the fact that she's still Snow White in her mind. It, you know, it's a cliche, but it's a white set and everything is, you know, beautiful and kind of curated and she's chosen everything and everything's really, really special. I think that's true of her character. The more we can keep Storybrooke grounded and real, I think allows us to go a little bit further into the fantastical on the fairy tale side. Most all of a fairy tale land is almost all made from scratch. There's a lot of detail that goes into making something. Um, a good example would be Snow's War Council costume, which she opened the season with. This is the War Council costume that was the Snow White costume this year. And this was a, a very, very much influenced by Alexander McQueen. And this is a beautiful textured cotton. Then we have the leather binding. And we did Swarovski crystals with little basket holdings on it. And it's very time consuming to do. Eduardo does a great job, you know, so I kind of try and always stay aware of what he's doing and decorate the environments not to kind of clash with his wardrobe. This is a set that we did out in the forest and we built this part of it. This was all real with people walking around and then there was just a little hill behind it and then this was all a virtual set. This was Moulin's hometown. Here we have Mulan. All of it is complete leather, and all of this is trapunto. It's a kind of quilting. And then we have the coins here. And uh, we had about, uh, we had two weeks to do this. And we have to do the costumes without an actor. This was before we were cast, so we have no sizes. We sort of know she's going to be a certain size, and in the back it's lace, so it can be kind of go in and out, but we have no choice but to start the costumes before they're cast, because otherwise we, they wouldn't have a costume. This was her magnificent cape. It has tremendous movement, and uh, it has a zipper so it can come off, but uh, it's put over this shoulder piece, and then that's all antiqued and hand-painted. Belle's adventure costume, we did out of maroon suede. This is all textured. Uh, leather. Notice the, the leather trim here. Uh, this is our homage to an original hoodie, so it was made out of linen. But even if you see this, it's just not just a hood thrown together. It's all hand detailed with wonderful, wonderful stitching. And then not only that, it's gone through our, our breakdown artistry and uh, they toned this and so that it doesn't look flat and it doesn't look new. And then we had the belts made and props come up with these uh, daggers. And, and the backs are always as interesting as the fronts. I mean, the, the, the workroom is amazing to see how they, they marry the backs. And, and it's quite, quite, quite something, I must say. So this was a concept sketch from Tallahassee, episode 206. This was Tiny, the giant's cave, and this was his treasure trove. So the idea that we started with was that these were like those Cambodian temples where they're completely overgrown and the roots have come through and punched through. Jorge Garcia's costume, which was, uh, he played the giant. And what we wanted to do was create something very, very exotic. And this is a very, very, one of my favorite pieces we've ever done. And it's so unusual. This is actually a skirt that we made sleeves out of, and then we added this wonderful fabric and aged. Uh, this is a bedspread um, that we got from uh, like an Afghani store. And then we put all of these coins on top of the suede, and uh, a lot of aging and dyeing and painting went into this. 
some of our stories take place in the dark forest, so the colors are kind of darker and kind of chocolates and dark greens. And then we do other shows, like all the Aurora Beats happened out in the desert, so the colors were more baked and golden -y cinnamons. So this was our homage to absolute modern couture, and this was Sleeping Beauty. And I'm gonna, this, this particular costume has seen its day, you can tell. We had to make two of these as well. It's faded, but we custom made the fabrics. Six different fabrics. This is what the original fabric looked like, because this is what it looked like. It's all built on top of this fabric, and then everything is hand sewn and hand shredded. So that's our piece de resistance for this season. And uh, it's quite time consuming, quite time consuming. But I, this was our mo most like modern piece that kind of crosses over into fashion world. My assistant Kristen behind us, she creates these, these wonderful scarves and um, we took it and said we should do the same thing. She does these scarves and I said, let's take the scarves a little bit uh, further, and we married that with the Rodarte kind of uh, aesthetic, you know, and so um, we came up with that. I think on the show we always try not, never to do anything straight, like it, what you expected. We always try and just twist it just a little bit. I personally like monochromatic sets, so we do a bunch of basically black and white sets or all white sets. We did Regina's Castle and Regina's World, weirdly based on medieval architecture with an evil look. This is one of the costumes we did for our evil queen, and the back is just jewels that just drape across the back, and it has this long, long train. I took an influence from the Joan Crawford movies, and a little bit of the exaggerated shoulder, but it's very strong and very sexy, and she loved wearing this. And the trick was getting the jewels onto here and the belt. This is a, a sari that was disassembled. And uh, again, all of this was like appliqued, so it almost looks like it was hand embroidered. And that's a trick that we, we uh, are very proud of in this workroom because it's, it's not very easy to do, but uh, it's a trick that works. And if you can see the details here, and she puts her finger right through this little loop. But those are all Swarovski crystals. Lana, who plays our evil queen, is one of those people that just walks into clothes. She's really open to going into an adventure. So the more adventurous, the more wonderful it becomes with her. Here we have evil queen. This is her armor piece, and it's got this textural uh, piece here. Uh, that is out of some kind of bizarre quilted uh, fabric. Our, our wonderful chain mail. And then again, this is all hand quilted, and then it's uh, smoky Swarovskis that are attached and placed over this. And this was her chain mail uh, neck. And then uh, the belt that went over it is quite spectacular. So this went over it like that. The detail just that went along on creating this belt, which was all handmade, it's chain mail and it's mesh and it's jeweled and it's leather and it's very complicated. And of course we did this in a couple of days. We really only had like four days to make this. They're constantly always trying to outdo themselves, which is, as writers, what we're trying to do every week as well. You know, Adam and Eddie, they just come up with crazier and crazier stuff, so that the bar gets raised almost every episode because we never do the same thing twice. You never know where it's going to go. I never think that we're going to make such a difference, but I think we do. But it's not when you try. I think it happens uh, organically. <laughs>